A global health threat not seen in 100 years. Coronavirus sparing no country with over 200 million cases worldwide and more than 4.2 million deaths and counting. The course of the pandemic depends on the leadership of the G20 countries. An increasingly two-track pandemic is causing a two-track economic recovery. We won't get the vaccine production increase we need without action on trade. We are all in mourning for those lost to the COVID-19 pandemic. The SABC International News Desk and its team of correspondents working to bring you the very latest fact-based COVID-19 information. The new administration says that it has increased vaccine distribution. The coronavirus pandemic has changed business in Kenya. The past 12 months have been unlike any in living memory. From exclusive interviews with key newsmakers. How can we quickly save lives? to the impacts and implications on people on the ground. Our job, to ensure we bring you all the angles. Even the most optimistic timetable has a vaccine available next year. India plans to supply 10 million vaccine doses. Priority will be given to the aging people. The challenge now for the government is convincing the public to be vaccinated. Trust the SABC International News Desk. Independent and impartial. The National Union of Mine Workers has appealed to people to refrain from politicizing the Marikana massacre, which will be commemorated today. On August the 16th, 2012, the country watched in horror as a total of 34 mine workers were brutally shot and killed at the hands of police. The NUM, uh, which was at loggerheads with Amku at Lonman Mine in the northwest province at the time, says that all mine workers from both unions were affected by the death of each of those involved. And the union has also asked for the speedy compensation of the affected mine workers, families as well, and uh, those include the 10 people who were killed before the tragic deaths that were caught live on television. And for more on today's commemoration, we cross live now to SABC News reporter Tebojo Pakedi, who is in Marikana. Tebojo, good morning. And, um, you know, once more, uh, we are again at that uh, now infamous copy where all of the tragedy unfolded on this day nine years ago. But still many questions and uh, the family still seeking answers. So you have a guest over to you to talk to us about today's proceedings. Thank you very much, Sakina. Good morning to you and the viewers. Yes, you clearly stated rightfully there that I am just in front of the copy. This is the copy that one cannot actually look at and not picture those thousands of mine workers who are at this copy. You cannot look at this copy anymore and not think of Mambush, who was known as the man in, gray, in green blanket. And of course, today, marking nine years since the massacre, as you have mentioned, there will be a commemoration today and of course we've seen this commemoration for the second time now taking place virtually due to COVID-19 but like you rightfully stated 34 mine workers were killed here nine years ago and that actually the day of the 16th of August is not the day where the problems of these mine workers started started years ago even before the 16th of August 2012 there were 10 people including two police officers and two security officials who were killed on that day. But I have with me Putuma, who is the regional secretary of AMCU. Thank you very much, Ramanyazi, for talking to us. Before we get to the proceedings of today, let's, yeah. let's just paint a picture of whether things have changed for mine workers since the massacre that took place nine years ago. Not at all. Nothing has changed. I can assure you nothing has changed. Uh, instead of that, this place is deteriorating. When the massacre happened in 2012, the shacks here on my left were not as many as they are, but now they stretch almost three kilometers. And that is an indication that nothing has changed on the side of the community. Similar with the, with the workers, whatever they were fighting for, the, some of the workers have not even got anywhere near the 12.5, which is what the, in 2012 they believed 
will make their life better. Mm -hmm. What does this say? Nine years later, 34 men workers, including the 10 that died before this day, nine years ago, the fact that there isn't any change, what does this say? It's actually painful because of what they died for is not what uh, we are enjoying. But, you know, as AMCO will continue to fight for a better life for everybody else. Not only for workers, including the communities that house these operations. The men workers have called for this day to be declared as a holy day in South Africa. If you can just talk about whether men workers will be working today and what is going on as far as we understand that they are quite not happy to be working on this day. Yeah, as early as 2012, they gave us the mandate that they are not going to work for this day. They want it to be declared as a public holiday because that defined the landscape of the mine worker in South Africa. Yes, we celebrate the, the Workers' Day, but it's not a South African identity. We can't identify ourselves with that, but we really need our own. Mm -hmm. Last question, just briefly. Give us the how today is looking like your program as AMCO in commemorating this day. Yes, we split the, the, the event into two. The main event is at the Grace Point in Bryanston, and we will be connecting them around half past two here for the laying of the reed, just for the fallen comrades. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's what we'll actually be doing, we'll be joining them, mm -hmm. so, so that we actually remember them. But due to the uh, constraints of COVID-19, mm -hmm. we'll be just have a limited number of about 60 mm -hmm. of us here. That was Putuma Manyazi, the Regional Secretary of AMCO here in Marigana, of course giving us the program of today as South Africa is commemorating nine years since the Marigana massacre. We will be later on talking to community members as you would know that things have not changed, even service delivery is quite bad, the mines are not adhering to their social responsibilities. That will be an interview we'll have in the next hour, but at this point we'll take a break and go back to Sakina after this break.